Good morning, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles. And we are south of Shreveport, Louisiana at a budget motel. We're going to a friend of mine to pick up some motorcycles. And uh, I don't know what he has. I don't think he knows what he has. So this is gonna be a surprise. Probably more of a surprise for me than for you, but you get to tag along. He's got a lot of stuff and not much room in his not much room in his house and it's getting a little hard to get around and he's not young anymore. In a quarter mile, merge onto I-49 North. So we're going, I won't mention his name. We probably won't film in the house. I don't like invading on people's privacies, but I'm still excited to see some bikes. I got the trailer, so I'll get to share some of them with you. We've got more to unpack in here. Early Allstate Twingle. Now this has the American style seat. Still has the low bars. I'm thinking this is late 50s. These are department store bikes. Here's a 250 Montgomery Wards Riverside. Sold at Montgomery Wards. Very original. The decals flaked off. There's some rubbing there. Here's a Montgomery Ward sticker. This is a 350. There's a bike under there. There's a bike under there. There's one back there. Gas. That is a Moto Guzzi V7 Sport. Look at those weird, weird handlebars. What are those? Well, we're going to drag this out. Now this is not picking a stranger's house. These are people you know. It's all about the relationships you make and try to keep. So we're keeping the name private and I'm gonna see if I can treat him fairly. This is the opposite of what's in the trailer. It's backwards. It's what's going in the trailer. 1974. Moto Guzzi V7 Sport, but these weren't actually 7s because by this time they had an 850. And you can tell it's the later model because it has the reinforced cases. But this is really different than just your ordinary Tonti frame Moto Guzzi. Dual disc Brembos on the front. Swallow tail clip ons. Check out this strange, I don't know if that's a fork lock or a steering lock. Here's your steering damper. So everything's different here and there. And you have your finned Salenta mufflers. That's different. And A quick change rear fender. So you can pop the tire off without taking off the mufflers. Now this bike I haven't identified wholly yet. I know it's a aerial red hunter, but they made 350 and 500 cc versions. This I'm guessing is about 59. Capri and a serial number, Cam and a serial number. 
I haven't found the model number yet. I'm assuming there's another stamp, VH, VL, something somewhere. I haven't found it yet. And the PSD Resistance, you've never seen one of these. I've seen two in my life. This is a Mako Typhoon. Very NSU-ish here, but has nothing to do with NSU. I think these are 400 cc's. Note, the carb is not in the cylinder. It's gonna be directly into the crankcase. And uh, is that a single-sided swing arm? No, it's not, but it's, oh, it looks like chain drive oil bath on this side. And it's Typhoon, T-A-I, not the way we spell it. Look how these foot pegs flip out. Well, it's stuck right now. Okay, so we're unloaded. And I think it's probably best to talk more about these bikes, take a second look. Now the V7 is gone, it's going to a friend of mine. And there's a whole lot more I learned about that Mako, which we're gonna look at. But we can't ignore this aerial either. It turns out this is a 1959 aerial Red Hunter. It's 500 cc's. The model number is actually there on the timing cover so you have to confirm the model number with both the engine and frame prefixes now the serial numbers don't match but they're close in sequence some of them didn't match near the end here's a magneto probably a generator beautiful big bore 500 cc single cylinder nice aluminum casting here you got an enclosed chain guard which is kind of unusual for a british bike full mud guards this is sort of neat if you look here you have a grease fitting for the upper and lower races now this bike was designed by the same guy that designed the square four and went on to work for Triumph and designed the Bonneville. So it's actually a very pretty bike. This is the last year for the four stroke aerials. They'd later come out with something called the Huntmaster, which actually had a BSA engine in it. But that takes us back to this Typhoon. The more I look and learn about this Typhoon, the weirder it gets. fall down so if you look under here there's your carburetor this is a battery box this is an oil bath enclosed chain guard and it's double roller so that'll never wear out 400 cc's they made them in 400 and 350 look at this crazy housing for the steering damper how about this you know what that is that is a gear indicator it's a four speed a mechanical gear indicator look at this look at how they had to do this housing to incorporate the leading link suspension into the full width brake hub german aluminum wheels here's something unique horizontally split engine cases 
Now the Japanese didn't start doing that until the 70s, I think. Um, I wonder if I can show the suspension. Oh, okay. I mean, I can. This is a lever for engaging one of the extra springs. There's two springs on that lever engages the second one. And this, for some reason, is not attached. It's a mono shock shock absorber with helper springs. I wonder why that's not attached. Maybe it's frozen. Still haven't figured out how they come apart. So when you're riding with a passenger, you engage the extra spring. Totally weird. I'm told they made about 1,500 of these from 1953 to 1958. So we're gonna have to hear what that sounds like. So it's probably gonna be another video, folks, but it may be a while. Tune in, subscribe, follow, whatever. And uh, I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching.